Okay, we're going to talk about the average value of a function over an interval. Now, you got to be careful because, uh, and we had it there in that free response question, average rate of change versus average value are two different things. Okay, average rate of change is still the slope. Average value is going to come into play here in a minute. But first of all, we're going to talk about a mean value theorem for integrals. Okay, so a reminder, the mean value theorem for uh, the derivative is that uh, f prime of c is equal to f of b minus f of a over b minus f. Okay, the slope of the tangent line is equal to the slope of the secant line somewhere on an interval. Um, we have a mean value theorem for integrals. Okay, of course you've got to be continuous like always. Um, then we have a number such that um, the value of the definite integral from a to b is equal to f of that number, so the y value of that number times b minus a. Now, symbolically, it, that just looks like somebody made something up, okay? Let's look at it visually, what that actually means. Well, the left side of that expression there, that definite integral represents the area under the curve, right? The definite integral from a to b of f of x dx represents the area under the curve of f of x. The right side is representing the area of a rectangle with the width of the interval, that's the b minus a, that's the width of the interval, and the height of f of c. So we have this um, visual right here. We have this curve. You've got the area that's under the curve. Well, there is some c value in this interval so that if you find its y value and you draw a rectangle using that height and the width of your interval, the area of this rectangle is the same as the area under the curve. Okay? The area of this rectangle is the same as the area under the curve, and that's what the mean value theorem for integrals is, is all about. find some c on this interval so that you draw a rectangle with its height that has the same area as the area under the curve. Okay, now the value of f of c is called the average value of f on the interval. Okay, that value, whatever f of c is, whatever that y value is, is actually called our average value on the interval. So here's your definition. It's got to be able to be integrated. It's integrable. That sounds like it's a made-up word, but that is a word. It's integrable on the closed interval. Then the average value is given by this. Now this is just a manipulation of the mean value here. Notice all we did was we moved is b minus a that was that was b multiplied by f of c. Uh, we moved it to the other side. Well, to move it, you got to divide or multiply by the typical. So the average value here, f of c, is the average value. Okay. Of f. Okay, is found by multiplying the definite interval from a to b of your function by 1 over b minus a. Okay, that's how you find the average value. You multiply the definite integral from a to b, the area under the curve, by 1 over b minus a, the width of your interval. That's the average value. Okay, so let's see this in uh, practice. Got a function, 3x squared minus 2x. We want to find the average value of this function on the interval from 1 to 4. So to do that, the average value is going to be average value is equal to 1 over b minus a, so 4 minus 1 times the integral from a to b, 1 to 4, of our function. 3x squared minus 2x, don't forget the dx. You need to be in the habit of putting that on there. 
Okay, let's crunch the numbers. 4 minus 1 is 1 third. Just leave that hanging out in front of the integral. Uh, actually, I'm going to integrate in the same step here. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, the antiderivative of 3x squared is x cubed minus the antiderivative of 2x is x squared. Well, that was an easy one. No fractions. Praise the Lord, right? I know you all get excited when there aren't fractions involved. Okay. Um, let's evaluate. Okay, again, I'm just keeping that one-third in front. There is no point in putting it in there until I crunch all the other numbers. Don't involve a fraction if you don't have to. Okay, uh, 4 cubed is 64 minus 4 squared is 16. This is where you got to be careful. Okay, minus, put a set of parentheses. This is where when y'all have been messing and you haven't been getting the exact right answer, this is where you've been messing up. It's with this minus sign right here. Okay. I don't know why I just wrote that as 1 cubed minus 1 squared. It's 1 minus 1. 1 cubed is 1. 1 squared is 1. If you want to write it out, that's fine. Um, but you really don't have to. Well, that's nice. 1 minus 1 is 0, so we don't have to worry about any signs or anything. So we've got 1 third times 64 minus 16 is, what, 48? And a third of 48 is 16. So the average value of 3x squared minus 2x on the interval from 1 to 4 is 16. Okay. On a different interval, it's going to be a different average value. Okay. It's going to be a different average value. Um, and just as a reminder, what that means is if you draw that curve, 3x squared minus 2x, and you find the area under the curve between 1 and 4, um, then uh, the rectangle that has the same area is going to have a height of 16. Okay. The area is 48, so the, that uh, rectangle has a height of 16. Okay. Now, um, when it's just general functions like this, the average value doesn't really have a whole lot of meaning, except for that whole rectangle versus the curve thing. Um, but these are going to have a context. Okay. We're going to have problems that have more of a context, uh, and, and the average value is going to mean something. Why not? What? Uh, yes. Well, because because it was a progression. Okay, somebody wanted to. They so they. Are we well, I mean, you have to know every single way. You 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 have to know all the approximations. Um, now that we know the definite integral, we know the exact area under the curve, but they do also want to see that you know how to use the other techniques. Right. Well, then you just use the definite integral. The only time you use the approximations is when they say, what is the left-handed Riemann sum? Yeah. They, they will come out and tell you if they want you to use an approximation. Otherwise, they ask for the area under the curve, definite integral. Yes? No, it's not exactly between A and B. It's going to depend on the curve where it is. Now, in that picture, it does look like it's halfway. And most of the time, it probably is going to be somewhere in the middle of your interval. But it really depends upon your curve. So it's just the point where the height. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's actually an interesting question. It didn't ask us to find C here, but let's let's find out what what value that is. Okay, where does three x squared minus two x equal sixteen? This is a completely separate um, idea here. But where is this function? What is C? We found f of C. We found the average value. Okay, sixteen was the average value. Um, but what if we wanted to know where does that happen? Okay, set your function equal to 16. I don't know that this is factorable. We can try. Um, it's a quadratic. Remember, it's got to be equal to 0 to solve. I always try factoring first. Um, let's see here. 
<sighs> would four and four work? No, eight and two. Eight and two works, I think. Minus eight plus six. Yep. So when we solve this, 3x minus 8 is equal to 0. x plus 2 is equal to 0. Um, negative 2 is not in our interval. Our interval was from 1 to 4. So that doesn't matter. 3x equals 8. So x is 8 over 3, which is what? 2.67, approximately 2.7. 3 goes in 8 twice with 2 left over. Yeah, 2 and 2 thirds, 2.7. So, in terms of our interval, that, I mean, that's pretty close to halfway. Most of the time, your C is going to be about halfway through your interval. And it kind of makes sense. If you look back at uh, this illustration we had a second ago, uh, most curves, if you're trying to, re if you're trying to draw a rectangle, But some of them may be a little bit more skewed to one side or the other. So that's an interesting little question. Thank you. Okay, so let's look at a problem here with a real world context. Okay? Um, we are told at different altitudes in Earth's atmosphere, sound travels at different speeds. It's kind of interesting. Um, it has to do with the density of the air. Uh, but they give us this piecewise function. We're used to piecewise functions having two pieces, but this one has five pieces. Um, because they split the atmosphere into five different intervals. Okay, so they talk about the altitude between 0 and 11.5 kilometers, and then from 11.5 to 22, 22 to 32, 32 to 50, and 50 to 80. Um, they split it up. Uh, into uh, those intervals, and they ask us, what is the average speed of sound over the interval? Okay, so we know the specific speeds of sound in those different intervals. I think it's interesting to know that it is constant between 11.5 and 22, but it's, it differs in the other ones. I'm kind of curious what's different about that portion of the atmosphere. I never actually researched it, but it kind of piques my curiosity. Um, but we want to know what's the average speed of sound okay, over this interval. So if they ask us to do that, it's piecewise function, just like with anything else with piecewise functions. You can do the problems just like you do any other function. You're just going to do it in pieces, and then you're going to put them all together. Okay, You're going to do it in pieces, and then you're going to put them all together. Um, so we need to integrate each of these over the interval, multiply by 1 over the interval, um, and go from there. So, um, 3,657 for the first piece. What about the second piece? 3,097.5. Very good. Third group? Still working. Fourth group? You have a disagreement. Okay, tell me what your... 3 over 2 divided by 2 is 3 over 4. Yes. Right, because 3 over 2 over 2 times 1 over 2 is 3 over 4. Okay, so uh, 3, 4, or 5. Does anybody have it? Okay, what did y'all get? Very good, 9,210. Not quite. Plus. Mm, kind of. It's under 3,000. Huh? Under 3,000. Under 3,000. No. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, the third one should actually be 2,987.5. And the fourth one, are y'all close? 